Loki was in a stalemate to retrieve the hair of the goddess Sif. The god of mischief instigated a clash between two families of dwarves, and these would compete to see who the best craftsman was, and the gods of Asgard, Odin, Thor, Frey, would be the judges. To enable the clash, Loki's head was literally at stake, due to a bet made with Brock and Itri. The dwarves, sons of Ivaldi, started to make their gifts for the gods, and Loki noticed that everything seemed to went well. But the god realized that the other pair was doing something outstanding. Loki then understood he had to intervene. Brock and Itri had already built two beautiful gifts, but they were certainly crafting the greatest of all works. It was a powerful hammer. To achieve perfection, the dwarves had to keep the forge at an ideal temperature, not a degree more or less. And Brock did his work by pumping the bellows with great precision. Loki noticed he had to act quickly and turned himself into a large hematophagous mosquito. He flew to Brock and painfully stung his hand. The dwarf withstood the pain and continued his work. Then Loki attacked with an even stronger sting in his neck. The dwarf unleashed painful cries but resisted. The god then decided to attack the dwarf's eyes. He closed his eyes and the eyelids were attacked. The agony was unbearable and the dwarf stopped pumping the bellows. Due to the temperature change, the hammer's handle broke. Loki considered his mission accomplished and went away. The time for the great clash had arrived, and the dwarves, sons of Ivaldi, presented their gifts to the gods. The goddess Sif, wife of Thor, was gifted with new hair made of gold. Seeing the goddess with her splendor back, Loki felt some relief. Odin was gifted a beautiful and powerful spear, capable of piercing anything, and every oath made under that spear would be unbreakable. Frey was given a huge boat, which could be folded so many times to the point where it could fit into a pocket. Those were three impressive gifts, much to Loki's relief. The turn of Brock and Itri had come. The latter still had puffy eyes because of the sting. He gave bracelets made of drop near gold to Odin, a material from which every eight nights, new bracelets would fall from it like drops. These could serve as honorary ornaments or a way to increase wealth. Frey was given a huge boar with golden fur, which could be mounted. The creature could fly and never be tired, and his shine drove the darkness away. And Thor's time finally arrived, and he was given a hammer. This is a beautiful hammer, but its handle is too short. I understand your disappointment, but don't judge this hammer by its handle. Its name is Mjolnir. It is indestructible and its power is almost indescribable. When thrown, it never misses its target and always comes back to its owner. Such a marvelous piece! With this powerful hammer, no giant will be a match for me. Odin, Thor, and Frey agreed that, from all those gifts, the Mjolnir hammer was certainly the best. Despite all the tricks, Loki's plan collapsed and now his head was demanded as a prize. Ha 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 ha! Now I want your head! Broki said, already sharpening his axe. But Loki had one last play. You can sever my head, as long as you do not damage a single piece of my neck. The agreement says that you can only have my head. You cheater! How will I get your head without damaging the neck? Then Odin intervened. If people paid more attention to the words used, they would never negotiate with the cunning Loki, the trickster god. Broki, to punish Loki, sewed his mouth so that he would never deceive anyone again for a long time. But at least the cheater kept his head on his neck, and the gods of Asgard received magnificent artifacts.